One of the great things about movies is that not only are they a fun escape from all the bullshit of everyday life, but they can also teach us important lessons about how to live those lives, like the value of friendship, camaraderie and loyalty, the dangers of pride and arrogance, the importance of compassion and charity, or the meaning of determination and resilience. Movies have the unique ability to inspire and move us, and like I say, the lessons they teach us have influenced whole generations of people to do more than they ever thought possible to reach higher, strive further, work harder and be more than they are. But they can also help to warn us against our darker impulses like selfishness, arrogance and hatreds. They're a bit like a set of moral scales that help to keep us balanced and level. But the problem with modern movies is that I've begun to notice the moral scale tipping in the wrong direction, trying to frame negative actions, decisions and messages in a positive light. Basically what this means is they're teaching people really shit lessons now, and if this sort of thing continues for too long, it's going to produce an entire generation of shitty people. I mean damn, just log into TikTok for 5 minutes and you'll see exactly what I mean. Luckily, the drinker is here to help, and truly, who better to balance the scales of morality than a barely functional Scottish alcoholic who considers it a major win if he wakes up in his own house? So join me for another episode of Why Modern Movies Suck. Now, for our first example, let's take a look at the 1998 Disney animated movie Mulan. It's set in Imperial China and follows the story of a young woman who disguises herself as a man so that she can enlist in the army and help defend her country from foreign invaders. The movie quickly establishes her as a bit of a free spirit, yearning to escape her safe but dull life and find adventure and excitement, which was actually a pretty common thing for Disney princesses back then. Anyway, like the other recruits, she gets put through some rigorous training to teach teach her how to be a soldier, and because she's smaller and weaker than the others, naturally she struggles to keep up with them. Her commanding officer doesn't think much of her, and neither do the other recruits. She even comes close to flunking out more than once, but through a combination of intelligence and sheer fucking determination not to give up, she's eventually able to turn situations to her advantage. She even wins over the respect of her commander, and her ability to think quickly under pressure allows them to win a great victory over the enemy army. Mulan is actually a pretty good example of positive life lessons. The struggles and eventual successes of the main character demonstrate the value of determination and perseverance even when the odds are against you. That a person's worth isn't defined by the size of their muscles, and even if you're not as big and strong as other people, it doesn't mean that you can't go on to achieve great things. It's all about playing the hand that you're dealt, even if that hand doesn't seem as strong as other people's. Now consider the live action remake of Mulan from a couple of years ago. The basic premise of the movie is the same. Foreign armies invade China, and because there's no men of fighting age in her family, Mulan disguises herself as a man so that she can join up instead. The difference though is in how the main character is presented and the challenges that she has to overcome, because basically there aren't any. Whereas the original Mulan was limited by her physical shortcomings and had to make up for them in other ways, gradually winning people over by refusing to back down, this new version is just fucking great at everything right off the bat. She's just as fast, just as strong, just as good at fighting as the others. In fact, if anything, she's probably better than them, because she was born with high levels of chi or something, which allows her to perform feats of agility and skill that border on the supernatural. So basically, all the challenges and problems that made life so difficult for the original Mulan are pretty much non-existent here. And well, it kind of undermines what used to be a pretty inspiring message. Whereas the original film taught people the value of hard work, determination and perseverance, even if things aren't going in your favour. However, the new movie gives them a character that's just awesome because, well, she was born that way. She doesn't really have to earn her special abilities, she doesn't have to work hard or strive to overcome adversity, she just kind of does it because she already has what she needs. And shit man, that seems like a pretty crappy lesson to apply to your own life. Like imagine going into every situation firmly convinced that you're already perfect and you'll just naturally succeed because you already have what you need. In fact, if anything, that reminds me more of Anakin Skywalker from the Star Wars prequels. So let's take a quick look at him, shall we? Anakin starts out as a good man who came from humble beginnings and has the potential to become the most powerful Jedi who ever lived. He's strong with the Force and quickly learns to develop his abilities, but his enormous potential and rapid rise to power gradually stokes a sense of arrogance, entitlement and impatience. He feels like it's his destiny to reshape the world and make it a better place, and quickly gets frustrated with anyone who stands in his way. Like 
like the Jedi High Council, who caution him against moving too quickly, forming personal attachments, and trying to take shortcuts to power. This frustration, combined with a strong personal attachment to the people close to him, makes him vulnerable to manipulation by sinister characters who want to use him for their own ends. And eventually, this combination of personal flaws and outside interference pulls him to the dark side of the Force, turning him against the people that love him most. And his inflated belief in his own superiority ultimately costs him everything. It's an interesting character arc that underlines the key message about Anakin's fall from grace. Taking the quick and easy route to power and success might give you short-term gains, but ultimately it's going to lead to long-term losses and disaster. Skill and talent that isn't tempered by wisdom, restraint and experience eventually leads to arrogance, impatience and a dangerous overestimation of your own abilities. And well, look how that one turns out. It's a cautionary tale that warns us against the dangers of hubris and suggests that the longer, harder road is what builds character, resilience and wisdom, the things that'll serve you best in life. As a point of comparison, consider Anakin's modern day counterpart, who basically has all of his strengths and potential, but none of his weaknesses or character flaws. Despite her enormous potential with the Force, and her abilities that just seem to come out of nowhere with no training or instruction, Rey never gives in to anger, impatience, hubris, or a lust for power. She's consistently portrayed as stoic, altruistic, compassionate, brave, resourceful, and pretty much perfect in every way. And fuck me, it's more boring than a low-budget Bruce Willis movie. Just like with the new version of Mulan, there's no particular challenge, obstacle, or shortcoming that Rey struggles to overcome. She already has everything she needs to succeed in life, and so there's nothing in particular to learn from her. Wow, what an inspiring example for all of us. And that's not even counting all the other horrendous life lessons to be learned from the new Star Wars movies, such as, you should always blindly try trust authority figures and do exactly as they command, even if their orders make no sense and run contrary to everything you know to be right. Battles and wars are won by protecting people you care about at all costs, even if that means preventing them from sacrificing themselves to save a much larger group of people that you care about. Running amok and randomly destroying property for a few minutes is the perfect way to enact meaningful social and political change on a planetary scale. Your family legacy and heritage is less important than who you are as an individual. You have no place in this story. You come from nothing. You're nothing. Oh wait, apparently your heritage does matter. You... are a Palpatine. Oh wait, now you can just choose your own heritage or something. Ray Skywalker. I'm so fucking confused. Now allow me to direct your attention to Wonder Woman 1984, the sequel to the original Wonder Woman which basically destroyed the character and the franchise that she was part of. Now, the plot for that movie is absolute nonsense, but for the sake of this video, the basic gist is that a magical object gets discovered which grants the wishes of anyone who touches it. Unfortunately, it usually takes something back in return. Wonder Woman chooses to be reunited with Steve Trevor, the man she fell in love with before he sacrificed himself like 70 years Years earlier. And wouldn't you know it, within a matter of hours, Steve shows up alive and well. Only it isn't actually Steve, it's just his consciousness inhabiting the body of some random guy and wearing him like a fucking skin suit. And Wonder Woman is totally fine with this apparently, she even has sex with him when he's clearly not capable of consenting to it. Now, take a moment to imagine how this would play out if the genders of these two characters were reversed. How it would go from a touching, poignant romance to a horrifying piece of sexual exploitation. The poor guy that she's now using as her own personal plaything was once an innocent man with friends, family, a life, hopes, dreams and aspirations for the future, and she was happy for all of that to be erased so that she could live out her fantasy with a guy that's been dead for 70 years. And what's even more sinister is that the movie tries to frame her eventual decision to give Steve up as some kind of of tragic heroic sacrifice. Fuck off, Wonder Woman. You should be absolutely ashamed of what you've done here. The same premise also applies to WandaVision. According to that show, it's basically okay to take control of an entire town against their will and keep them in a state of perpetual agony as they're forced to live out your twisted fantasies. Why? Because someone you love died and now you've got the big sad. No shit, people lose loved ones every day, but it doesn't give them an excuse to go on some crazy rampage and destroy innocent lives. This is the stuff of horror movies, but for some reason the main character is framed as a tragically misunderstood hero that sacrifices the things she loves for the sake of others, which is a bit like framing a bank robber as a philanthropist because he got caught and forced to give back all the money he stole. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them.
You didn't sacrifice anything, Wanda, because this stuff wasn't yours to take in the first place. Both Wonder Woman and WandaVision, whether they intended it or not, are teaching their audience some pretty fucking sketchy life lessons. The idea that your own personal happiness is literally more important than other people's freedom, well-being and personal integrity. This is the worldview of a villain, not a fucking hero. You know, when I try to imagine the kind of person that would come out the other end if they took the lessons of all these movies and shows to heart, I'm kind of horrified by the possibilities. Instead of teaching people to be brave, determined and compassionate, to take the harder road and become stronger through adversity, to care for others and respect their freedom, to work hard and better themselves, we're instead teaching people to be arrogant, complacent, entitled, narcissistic and selfish. These are shitty lessons designed to produce shitty people that are destined to crash and burn once they get out into the real world. Or even worse, invade it in large enough numbers that they actually start to dilute the culture and make it just as shitty as them. And if that happens, well, don't say the drinker didn't try to warn you. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.